Well, guys, WrestleMania 20, it's finally come and go. I gotta say, overall, great show. However, there were some disappointments, so... Not including disappointments, it was still a great show to me. Alright, of course, before the show started, they had a pre-show match, which was streamed on WWE.com and on YouTube. It was a triple threat tag team match for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Primo and Epico versus Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd versus Usos. This was a fun match. Didn't get much time. Blah, blah, blah. Didn't get much time, but it was very, very fun. A lot of high flying, and it was really cool. Ending came when one of the Usos hit a splash on Ju Justin Gabriel, I think it was. But uh, Epico ended up breaking the pin and ended up hitting the backstabber on one of the Usos. Get the one, two, three, entertain the WWE Tag Team titles. Uh, whatever. I didn't want them to win, but whatever, I guess. Rosa, of course, looking hotter as usual, but, uh, uh, you know already. Alright, then we get to the actual show. Juan Garcia sings America the Beautiful, which she did a very, very good job, by the way, with that. And the show actually had no opening prior, which I thought was very, very strange. It just fit the intro, and then went straight to the show, which I thought was weird. Therefore, going from there, you had the opening match of the actual show, which was for the World Heavyweight Championship, Dana Bryan vs. Sheamus. <sighs> this is what happens. Bell rings. Dana Bryan kisses AJ. Turns around to a big old bro kick. One, two, three. Sheamus is your new World Heavyweight Champion. A squash match for a WrestleMania opener for a WrestleMania World Title match, a squash match. This is what put me in a bad mood for almost the entire show. I was extremely pissed. They went from having a dark match last year to having a squash match last year. I'd rather they just freaking put him in the dark match instead because if they don't trust these guys to put a great WrestleMania match on, why would they even put him on the card to begin with? It makes no sense and it really, really is a huge disappointment for me. I don't know. Are they going to have another match next year WrestleMania and actually have five minutes? And then at WrestleMania 30, they have a freaking 10 minute match? What? Just, oh my god. I don't know. That really just put me in bad mood, but whatever. Throw that match out. Uh, then you had a backstage with Team Johnny. They're getting ready for their big match. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. And then, uh, yeah. Then you go on the Orton versus Randy Orton versus Kane. Uh, it was good. It was probably the same level, I'd say, as Cena and Kane from the Rumble. So it was still, it was a pretty damn good match. Ending came when Kane was on top rope. Randy Orton had to try to, uh, try to hit RK off the top rope. Kane turns into a huge choke slam on the top rope. One, two, three. Kane wins the match. I'm very happy Kane won because in my predictions video, I said Kane needs this win. And Kane got the win, which I was pretty happy about. So, pretty good match. Expect to rematch at Extreme Rules. Uh, next stage, uh, next segment, I should say not next stage, that was pretty stupid. I uh, had yeah, a segment with uh, Santino, some guy from Deadly Ca uh, Deadly's Catch, I assume, considering that they're promoting that for some reason, I don't know why. And Mick Foley, pretty funny, ends up having Ron Simmons coming out saying, DAMN! So, that was good. Uh, next we had the Intercontinental Championship match, Cody Rhodes vs. Big Show. Like I expected, it was a decent match, nothing special. Ending came when Cody Rhodes hit the disaster kick on Big Show, then put him down. Cody Rhodes had to do it again, but the funny part is, Cody Rhodes didn't know where to hit him from. So Big Show was like circling around, seeing where Cody Rhodes was going to try and kick him from. And it was hilarious. But Cody Rhodes says, <laughs> Cody Rhodes does try to do a disaster kick. Big Show ends up hitting a huge spear, uh, which actually his arm at Cody Rhodes, and uh, then, <laughs> I cannot speak for some reason. Uh, his arm ended up hitting Cody Rhodes in the nuts because Cody Rhodes is grabbing his crotch, which I thought was hilarious. Cody Rhodes gets up, Big Show goes, <sighs> huge, uh, what's it called, the WMP or whatever? WMD, that's what, yeah, uh, knockout punch, whatever. <laughs> and in one, two, three, becomes the new Intercontinental Champion. Don't know why they gave him the title. He was going for the world title last month, and now he's going for the IC title this month. Makes no sense to me. I don't know what that was going to do with the title, but... Whatever, I guess. We're at the wait and see. So, yeah, whatever. Um, next on, you had the Divas Tag Team Match. Kelly Kelly and Maria Menounos versus Beth Phoenix and Eve. Uh, nothing to talk about. It was whatever. The only cool thing happened is when Kelly Kelly did like a senton flip on the Beth. Pretty damn cool. Besides that, nothing happened. The ending came when Maria Menounos 
pushed Beth Phoenix in the Eve and rolled Beth Phoenix up for the 1, 2, 3, and ended up winning the match for her and Kelly. What ifs? Next, they have a backstage segment with Shawn Michaels talking about the Hell in a Cell match, and yeah, that led into the Hell in a Cell match. The Undertaker was Triple H with special guest referee Shawn Michaels. Um, cool entra uh, entrance by Triple H. By the way, someone should tell that fool before he comes out to shave his chest. That shit was hairy as hell. And uh, <laughs> Undertaker comes out, takes off the hood with like a lightning going off, and he does it, and showing that his head's buzzed. And Shawn Michaels is like, What the fuck? <laughs> That's what Shawn Michaels is like doing because he's so shocked. Uh, five minutes in, Triple H is the mess. Uh, I don't I don't know what I was trying to say there. Uh, Triple H was, I'm going to say dominant. I, I wasn't trying to say that, but I'll just say that. He was dominating the Undertaker. Five minutes in, Sean, you end this or I end this. You know, he's telling him, hey, you ring the bell now, basically do a screw job, or I'm about to kill the guy. Sean doesn't do it. And Shawn Michaels is like crying throughout the entire match. He's like, Undertaker, please just give up. Let me please ring the bell. It's like, weren't you saying a few weeks ago you're on Undertaker's side? Like, what are you, what are you doing, man? But, um, great back and forth. Well, not back and forth, but it was a great, great match. Um, a six spot where Triple H ends up hitting the spine buster on Triple H. Oh my god, ugh, I cannot speak for some reason in this video. Triple H ended up hitting a huge spine buster on the Undertaker onto the steel steps, which you can see huge bruising on Undertaker's back after the match. And it was this great uh, back and forth action for like the last 10 to 15 minutes, which was awesome. And you know how last year's WrestleMania, we had uh, uh, Triple H begging Undertaker to get up and it? Yeah, this year, it was reversed. We had Undertaker begging Triple H to get back up, which was awesome. And there was a spot in the match where the Undertaker, um, uh, Shawn Michaels was like asking the Undertaker, like, do you want to quit? Undertaker's like, fuck you, Shawn. Puts him in Hell's Gates. Triple H breaks it up. Another ref comes in. Charles Robinson, might I add. Uh, Taker hits a huge choke slam. Triple H, one, two, kicks out. Undertaker choke slams Charles Robinson, and he's out. So both refs are out. Uh, Shawn Michaels up to keep back up. Uh, Undertaker goes for the tombstone. Triple H. Triple H tosses the Undertaker. Shawn Michaels from out of nowhere. Super kick. Turns around. Pedigree by the uh, Triple H on the Undertaker. One, two. Undertaker kicks out, and then it's over. It's it's going on. Undertaker just hulks up, beats Triple H with the steel chair. Triple H tries to hit him with the sledgehammer. Undertaker takes the sledgehammer and says, I don't fucking think so. Ends up hitting Tombstone on Triple H. One, two, three. The streak is now 20 0. Undertaker wins a great match. Great sportsmanship out of the match. Out of the match. Uh, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels carry Triple H to the ramp. I'm running out of breath for some reason. <laughs> and then they end the ramp. They all hug like they clicked it at the Hall of Fame last year. It was just a great, great moment. So that was really, really good. Uh, from there, you go on to the 12-man tag team match. Team Johnny versus Team Teddy. I'm not going to list all the members. You know everyone who's in the match. Plus, it's in the description box anyway. So I'll need to team, uh, name everybody. Overall, it was a decent tag match. It only got like 10 minutes. It wasn't that long of a match. Uh, I'm just going to skip right to the end because there's nothing really to talk about in this match. Everyone starts going off on everybody. You know, everyone's attacking everybody. And it comes down to The Miz and Zack Ryder in the ring. Zack Ryder's dominating The Miz. Going for the Rough Rider. Rough, uh, Miz throws Ryder up. Hits the Rough Rider on Dolph Ziggler or something. I don't know how the hell that happened. But it happened. Uh, Miz and Ryder start going at it. Ryder tries to hit the Broski boot. But Eve goes in the ring and does like the little broski thing with him. But the referee's like, Eve, you gotta get out. And Zachary was like, are you serious, bro? Miz comes out of nowhere from behind. Hits a skull question from Nally. One, two, three. Team Johnny wins the match. So John Larry Nines is now both the GM of Raw and SmackDown. Which is awesome. And out of the match, Team Teddy's pissed. And Eve's like, I'm sorry, Zach. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Boom! Kick the nuts. And she walks out. Yeah. That's basically it. Alright, then you have backstage, Team Johnny's coming back, they're excited, CM Punk's backstage, you know. Larry Knight's like, Punk, Punk, how you been? Punk's like, dude, I'm busy. He's like, 
just so you know, I know you're mad at Jericho, and I'm, I want to ensure that this is a wrestling match, not a brawl. Therefore, if you get disqualified, you will lose the title. Have a good match, Punk. Punk's like, you son of a bitch. And, yeah, that leads to the WWE Championship match, Chris Jericho versus CM Punk. Um, first five minutes of the match, of course, they had Chris Jericho trying to get Punk EQ'd. Uh, Punk took a steel chair out, and Jericho's like, come on, hit me, Punk, hit me. Because, stipulation, Punk gets EQ'd, Jericho wins the title. Punk doesn't want to do that. So Punk's like, damn, no. And, uh, you know, the match was disappointing. I expect a lot more. There was actually some point in this match where someone in the crowd actually started chanting boring. And, honestly, I couldn't help but agree with that person because this match really wasn't that great until the last, like, freaking seven, seven minutes, I'd say. And it started getting really, really good. Um, huge counters, like when Punk jumped on the top, Jericho hit a huge code breaker, uh, Punk hit a, a sick ass GTS on Jericho, Jericho put him in the lion, the lion, blah, 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 the lion tamer, and then he put him in the walls of Jericho, Punk didn't tap, and they had a little cradle war, where it goes, one, two, no, one, two, no, they keep, you know, rolling around the ring, then Punk put him in the end kind of ice, Jericho got on the ropes. Punk puts him in the end of kind of vice again. Jericho finally taps out. And Punk proves to the world that he's the best in the world. So Punk is still your WWE champion. And a great match, but I it could have and it should have been better. Let's just say that. And then... Oh shit, I forgot to mention. I think it was after the Triple H Undertaker match that the, the class of 2012 Hall of Fame come out. And, you know, say hi. But... Whatever. From there on, you go into a stupid, stupid segment, which was not needed, with Brodus Clay, where he comes out and like, I want everybody to take their phones out and call your mama. I'm like, really, dude? And he's like, oh, my mama's here. Pulls his mom out and some other, I forgot what he said, his mom and something, and they all start dancing to somebody call my mama, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is so stupid. And, yeah. And then, ladies and gentlemen, from there we go on to the main event of the evening. The Rock vs. John Cena. Of course, MGK and Esther Dean sing Invincible, leading to John Cena coming out in a new stupid green attire, which is really, really ugly, really, really stupid and ugly. <laughs> he comes out, then Florida comes out, sings Good Feeling, then sings Wild Ones, and The Rock comes out. And the match happens. This match, to me, was amazing. This was a phenomenal match. I loved it. To me, this was the match of the night. I really thoroughly enjoyed this match. Great back and forth. Cena really brought it. Cena looked really, really good. However, the first five minutes in the match, Cena looked gassed. Like, Cena was breathing really, really hard. Like, the first five minutes. Which I thought was weird. But it was great. You had a lot of, you know, locks, uh, a lot of hip toss, you know, of course Rock taking his infamous uh, spot where they throw him into the guardrail, into the ribs. I don't know why Rock loves doing that spot so much, but whatever Rocky likes, what Rocky locks, I guess. And it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> the match was really into it, the crowd was into it. My brother even came out and watched it with me too, you know, he was really in the match as well. Six spot where Cena does the leg drop and Rock just he go he falls straight on his head man it was awesome it was great and of course Rock ends up hitting the rock bottom Cena ends up hitting the attitude adjustment uh, Rock's on the top rope does a cross body Cena turns it into the AA hits it one two Rock kicks out and Cena's like I'm gonna end this uh dude I'm skipping so much shit I'm just gonna wait. Because I want to talk about more things. Before all this happened, let's rewind back. Rock <laughs> hits the people's elbow. Rock uh, Cena hits the five knuckle shuffle, and it was just a great back and forth match. Uh, Rock did probably the worst sharpshooter I've ever seen in my life. Did two of them, and they were just horrific. It was terrible. He should never do a sharpshooter ever again in his life. Though that was an embarrassment to the sharpshooter. That's how bad it was. Cena does the STF, locked in, Rock doesn't tap. Then we get back to the ending of the match. <laughs> Cena, Rock hits a crossbody, Cena's AA, kicks out. 
Cena tries to lift people people's elbow, takes his, you know, yeah, throws in the crowd, does a, hits one rope, hits the other, rockets up, rock bottom, and I'm like, no, 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 same exact feeling I had for the rumble, and this feeling was not good. The feeling what happened was the person I wanted to win was gonna lose, and that's what happened. One, two, three. The Rock defeats John Cena. Not only was I pissed, when that happened, my brother jumped out of his seat and yelled, "What the fuck!" I don't want to say that really loud, but yeah, he screamed it pretty damn loud. He was pissed, and I was pissed too. And I watched, and I was like. Are you shitting me? What the hell are they going to do with John Cena now? I mean, John Cena, he's going to mope around saying he lost to The Rock. It's just, uh, it really put me in a bad mood even more after that. I mean, I'm not a John Cena fan. I mean, I don't mind the guy, but I'm not a fan of his, but I just really, really want to see him win. I mean, the whole point of these matches where it's a legend versus a modern day top guy is to have the legend put over the modern day guy like Cena and The Rock didn't do that and that really pissed me off but I'm not going to take away from the match, the match is still great Rock wins, whatever all you team bringer guys can now start shitting on everyone saying Rock won bitches, I don't care it was a great match that's all that matters to me alright this is my review uh, shit how long is this 16 minutes, holy fuck. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'm out, guys. Peace.